There was a land with three giant industrial park owned by Abu. Abu took a loan from Pinkin Van Burhan and built a double story factory to manufacture trousers. This land was charged to Pinkin Van as a security to finance and building the factory. Abu bought 20 units of sewing machine and 8 units of custom made air conditioner. The sewing machines was bought under a sale and purchase from Senyum Bank. Not only that, a part of the land of the factory was turned into a hostel for workers which they bought three automatic washing machines. Unfortunately, Abu failed to pay Pinkham Bank for monthly installments after two years. Pinkham Bank decided to foreclose the land and get all the items attached to the factory. Abu and Sanim Bang did not agree. On the other hand, Baka, as the owner of the adjacent land, had excavated part of his land to build a cafeteria for factory workers. Adding insult to injury, part of Abu's land collapsed onto Baka's land and damaged Abu's stalls. Good day, Young Arif. May it please, my name is Shazom Hossein and today I appear as the junior counsel presenting the case between Mr. Abu and Pin Kambang. We all shall be submitting two grounds for this hearing and the first ground would be under the law of fixture and title. Young Arif, in order to see whether Pin Kambang has the right to foreclose items attached to the factory which are sewing machine, custom-made aircon and automatic washing machine, We'll start with the definition of the land under Section 5 of the National Land Code. Allow me to show Exhibit 1.1. As you can see on the exhibit, one of the definitions of the land includes the surface of the earth and all substances forming the surface of the things attached to the earth. Moving on to the law of fixture and chattel in Exhibit 1.2. This law assists the parties to claim the right item which might form part of the land or not. Fixture is an item attached to the land and immovable, therefore it shall be part of the land. While chattel is an item if attached to the land, it is removable, thus it shall not form part of the land. Malaysia allowed the adoption of English law's application on fixture to be used according to the case of Goh Chong Hin. In Exhibit 1.3, Case Holland and Hobson, the court applies two tests to determine whether the item considered to be a fixture or chattel, namely the degree of annexation and the purpose of annexation. Both tests must be applied. Degree of annexation refers to an objective on the physical attachment of the article. Question asks whether the item can easily be removed without injury to itself or to the premise. If an article affixed to the land, even slightly, the presumption would conclude to be a fixture. However, if an article is attached to the land by its own weight, it will be chattel. Second test need to be applied is purpose test. The test determines the purpose in which the impunch object is serving. If the objective of the attachment is for better enjoyment of the land, then that would strengthen the presumption set under the first test that the things would be a fixture and thus it has become part of the land. However, young Arif, there are exceptions in the general rule of fixture. Objects determined as fixture will remain with the land and title to over it will pass down to whomever becomes a proprietor. But such item is adjudged as a chattel, then it may be removed by whosoever claiming to be their owner, which could be different from the land ownership. One of the exceptions is if there is a written agreement as stated in Exhibit 1.4. Case of Wigan State Senior Bahai. The issue arises whether the machine has become affixed to the land having regard to the existence of higher purchase agreement on one hand and the charge on the other. The court obtained two questions which are whether the machine is an outright sale or higher purchase agreement and whether the machine is affixed while being acknowledged by another party the existence of higher purchase agreement. The court concluded that the chargee has all the right of the item as stipulated in the charge document. 
Yang Arif, as I had laid down all important laws, this will be continued by Senior Counsel Mr. Zubli for the application. Thank you. May it please this Honourable Court. Good day, Arif. My name is Zubli Kuzari Benzuki, the co counsel for Abu, as the plaintiff in this case. As contended by my learned counsel regarding the available law, I will be submitting the reasons why Income Bank cannot foreclose all items on the land. In the light of this present case, there were three items, namely the sewing machines, custom air conditioners and washing machines. Referring to the case of Holland against Oxen, the first test is the degree of annexation test, whereby will it cause damage to the object if removed. Referring to exhibit number 2.1, the sewing machines were affixed on the floor using nuts and bolts and it will cause damage to the sewing machine if removed. While as for the air conditioners, it were custom made. They were affixed to the land seamlessly and therefore it will cause damage in removing the air conditioners. It can be concluded that both the sewing machines and the air conditioners are prima facie fixtures as both were fixed to the land and can cause damage if removed. The washing machine, on the other hand, rests on its own weight and hence it will cause no damage if removed from the land. In that sense, the washing machines are not fixed on a fixture. On the other hand, the second test propounded in Holland against Oxen is the object or purpose of the annexation test. If the purpose is for better enjoyment of the land, it is a fixture. May I draw the attention of your Ari to exhibit number 2.2? The sewing machine and the air conditioners were for better enjoyment of the land as to improve its usefulness and value. This is because of the factory built in producing trousers. While the, for the washing machine purpose were to be used by Abu's workers, as in the present case, the washing machines were bought by Abu's workers and the washing machine were never intended to be used to wash the trousers produced by the factory as for better enjoyment of the land. The sewing machines and the air conditioners were for better enjoyment of the land and thus fulfill both tests which are the degree of annexation test and the object of annexation test. However, there is an exception to this general principle which is when there is a written agreement. In the case of weekend state, Sendirian Berhad against Bahagia Trading Sendirian Berhad, the East Asiatic Co. Limited and others. The court held that higher purchase agreement formed as an exception to fixture. Referring to exhibit number 2.3, the sewing machines were bought under a higher purchase with Senyum Bank. In that sense, the sewing machines were owned by Senyum Bank and not Abu until full payment as stated in the higher purchase. Therefore, we submit firstly that the sewing machines cannot be foreclosed by income bank as there is an exception for fixtures under higher purchase between Abu and Senyum Bank. Next, we are in the agreement with the opposing counsel that the air conditioners fulfill the two tests and as such a fixtures. Lastly, the washing machines did not fulfill both tests and therefore can be regarded as shattered. If there is no further question from this honourable court, I thank this court for its time and indulgence. Good day, young Arif. I am Iman Ali. I represent the plaintiff Abu. We shall be submitting the issue for this hearing today. The issue is whether Baka is liable for causing the withdrawal of support from Abu's land. First and foremost, a landowner has natural rights over his land under the common law. Please refer to Exhibit 1.1. Such rights were incorporated in the Section 44 Clause 1 of the National Land Code. Section 44 Clause 1, Paragraph B of the National Land Code stipulates that a landowner has the right to support. A right to support imposes a negative duty that requires the owner of the adjacent land not to cause the withdrawal of lateral support that his land is providing to the neighbouring land. This rule was illustrated in the case of Dalton against Henry Angus and Co. contained in Exhibit 1.2. In this case, the plaintiff's house relied heavily on the lateral support 
from the soil of the defendant's land. Later, the plaintiff converted his house to a factory, which added additional pressure to his land. 20 years after the conversion, the defendants employed the contractor to pull down the house. As a result, the plaintiff's land sank, bringing down the factory. The House of Lords held that the plaintiffs had acquired a right to support for their factory due to the 20 years' enjoyment and could take action against the defendant. For this rule, there are two prerequisites that must be established. This refer to the cases enumerated under Exhibit 1.3. Firstly, the withdrawal of support must be caused by the defendant. This point was brought up in the case of Wan Sun Ting Mining against Ampang Estate Limited. The Court of Appeal held that there was no evidence showing that the appellant excavated the mine hole, which led to the withdrawal of support from the respondent's land. Hence, the appellant was not liable. This is because the right to support does not involve a positive duty on behalf of the landowner to provide support for the adjoining land. If the owner of the land did not cause the withdrawal of support, actions cannot be taken against him. The second requirement is that the damaged land must be in its natural state. A land in a natural state is defined as a land that is unburdened with buildings and unweakened by excavations. No rights to additional support will be acquired by an owner of a land that has been weakened. This proposition was applied in the case of Madam Cha Siang against Chok Choi Kong Kong Si. Here, the bank of the adjoining fish pond owned by the plaintiff collapsed due to the defendant's mining activities. The court held that the fish pond is a product of excavation which filled up the pond with water. Therefore, the pond was not in its natural state, which deprived the right to support of the plaintiff. However, this condition has been altered by the Singapore Court of Appeal in express print against monocraft as contained in Exhibit 1.4. Here, although the impugned land was weakened due to the weight imposed by the erection of buildings, the court held that the appellant was still entitled to the right to support. The court took into consideration the high intensity of land use pattern in Singapore. The overall effect of this ruling is that the right to support can be maintained by the landowner despite having additional weight imposed on the land within 20 years, which is an alteration against the case of Delton mentioned before. That's all for me, Yang Arif. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good day I think to Yang Arif. My name is Ali Kari Bin and I am the junior counsel yeah, today representing my client. The claimant today in today's case that has been brought before this honorable court, Yang Arif, is that. Yang Arif, firstly, I would like to bring the court's attention to Exhibit 2.1. Yang Arif, it is actually important for this court to actually first be familiarised with Section 441B, Yang Arif. As my senior counsel stated earlier, Section 441B brings a meaning that the right to the support of the land in its natural state, Yang Arif, by an existing land and all the natural rights subsisting in respect thereof. Yang Arif, that is pure reading of the section itself. Yang Arif, close meaning brings a meaning that the natural, sorry, the right to support Yang Arif in the natural state of land is presumed to be with the land only, Yang Arif. And in this case, Yang Arif, the right to support uh, of my client's land, Yang Arif, is presumed to be in the hands of my client, Yang Arif. And this is very important, Yang Arif, of uh, the implication of Section 441B of National Land Code, Yang Arif, which I believe must be first strengthened in this court of law, Yang Arif. Yang Arif, I implore this court to take the view that the right of support, of course, comes to the land owner. And there is also a negative duty in the, at the same time to the adjacent landowner. In this case, Yang Arif, we all know that it is Mr. The Bakaya. Therefore, it is impertinent that this court finds itself in a position to see that the right of support here is actually presumed to be with my client and there is of course a negative duty to actually provide support Yang Arif, to uh, my client here and this duty is not exercised at, at all by my uh, by the defendant who believes the Bakar Yang Arif. Having said that, I would like to move on to my second point Yang Arif, of course in actually relying Yang Arif, on a very fundamental case that has been used by uh, my senior counsel earlier in his submission, I would like to refresh the court's memory and, of course, retrace to the case of 
Dalton and Angus. Yeah. Now, if this landmark case of Dalton and Angus must be very useful for this court today, now, right? as I would like to actually implore the court to shift its attention to the two prerequisites that the court in Dalton and Angus had propounded in order for the right of support to actually be the valid and exercisable. Now, right? Now, the first of the two prerequisites is to actually satisfy the court that the withdrawal of support done so the withdrawal of support is done by the defendant. That is the first of the two prerequisites I have, as had been laid down in the case of Dalton and Angus Yang. Now, the, in order to prove this fact that the withdrawal, of, the withdrawal of support in this case had been done by the defendant, Mr. Bakra, it is very submissible for this court to actually uh, point its way towards the material facts of this case now. Yeah, if I would be of great assistance yeah, to actually point to the facts that it was the actions of Mr. Bata to excavate part of his land to build a peculiar yeah, that had caused the land of my client yeah, Mr. Bata today to be damaged. Yeah. Therefore, yeah, it moves me to the second prerequisite, yeah, which is very vital to be ascertained. Yeah. This is because of the fact that if this prerequisite is not satisfied, yeah, then of course there is no case to be uh, there is no case to be fought for yeah, then, as uh, the right of support will cease to exist yeah, then, if today I and my senior counsel fail to prove yeah, then, the second prerequisite, which is the land itself must be in its natural state. Now, yeah, for a land to be in its natural state, yeah, then, as laid down in the case of Angus and Dalton, it has to be a land which is unburdened by buildings and unweakened by excavations. Yeah. In other words, it means it is a land which is not ripped out of its, of its uh, natural properties. Now, in this case, it would be actually hard to prove this second bureaucracy to be satisfied. Now, if yeah, Arif, Exhibit 2.3 is the case of Express Spring Private Limited and Monocross Private Limited and another. Of course, this case yeah, Arif, must be of the utmost importance for the court to take into consideration before arriving to a judgment. Yeah, Arif. Yeah, Arif, this is because I have stated earlier that it would be hard for me and my senior counsel to prove that my, uh, my client here today, yeah, Arif, Mr. Abu, would have his land in its natural state when the damage occurred. Yeah, Arif. This is because he had already built a factory on it. Yeah, Arif whereby uh, the argument that can be given by the defendant is of course the land owned by Mr. Abu in this case had already been burdened by the erection of buildings here. But yeah, this is where Exhibition 2.3 comes in handy for the use of the court before arriving to a judgment here. Exhibit 2.3 perverts the view of course the case of Express Pin Private Limited and Monocross Private Limited uh, yeah, it holds the view that Although an impugned land may be burdened by the erection of buildings and so, however, the right of support is still entitled to the landowner. Of course, in this case, they gave it to their family. And this is such a revolutionary uh, judgment, of course, you know, which stipulates that the development of our land law, of course, has changed, has deviated from the common law principles, you know, as had been also stated, stated earlier by my senior counsel. You know, because in the judgment, in Express Print uh, Private Limited and Monocraft uh, Private Limited and another, the court held that the right of support is not to be entitled for, uh, only after the duration of 20 years of easement or enjoyment of land. It is to be entitled, of course, you know, as I was saying, it is to be entitled upon the disposal of land. Now, now this is a point which should be taken of utmost importance you know, in before arriving to a, to a judgment for our client you know, today in his plea. Yeah, this is a point which cannot be left out. As this, this is because the fact that the judgment expressed pre rebuts the rule that enjoyment, sorry, uh, the right of support is only to be enjoyed after 20 years of enjoyment of land. Otherwise, a person or a landowner cannot have right of support. And thankfully, to the case of expressed premium, we can actually apply to the mutual price in this case, whereby 
we can actually see that Mr. Abu would actually be entitled to have his rights for them. Before I humbly rest my case, I am of the view that this court has already come to a judgment and I am convinced that this court is of the view that as a conclusion, the defendant, Mr. Baka, can be held liable for the damages that he had caused over onto Mr. Abu's land.